Welcome back to the Overwatch Open presented by Face It and E League. I am Ask Joshi casting with Tempo ZP. How are you doing today, Andrew? Things are going well, man. Uh, what better map to start out on than Dorado? It's been a map, of course. Uh, we've seen a lot of it as of late, but it's where you get interesting uh, looks at how teams attack point A, whether it be slow or fast in the streets phase, which has really turned into one of the more complicated parts as far as strategy goes. So I'm super excited. Misfits versus Bikini Beach. Yeah, Misfits versus Bikini Beach. We mentioned it right before the break. Basically, Misfits were kind of a number one seed coming in while uh, Bikini Beach basically pulling up the rear as far as points are concerned. That's the benefit of qualifying first is you get to face the rear. Yeah, the thing about Bikini Beach uh, that we didn't talk about a little bit uh, before the game is that they did have a decent win against Evox, which has a whole lot of veteran players on like Miker, Vainless, uh, Evoke himself, and others. But There's Miker right there. Yep. <laughs> Well, that's it. So now he's on the key. Yeah. So uh, this is, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's been some roster changes going on. Either way, so Micro is in here for Bikini, and that defense is going to be Biok on Reinhardt, Atomicus on Reaper, uh, Diobo on the Zenyatta, Micro on Lucio, Dante on the McCree, and Sweeney going to be on the Zarya. And that's a pretty standard defensive composition that we're seeing there. And things have been looking this way for a few weeks now. Basically, Zen and Lucy are the de facto supports, while Reaper and McCree have been basically every defensive side. Uh, essentially, just because you don't need to flank as much. Genji and Tracer not really looking for the healers in the back line. But we are already up in this choke here. No deaths on either side yet. Bikini Beach playing a very, very back uh, defense, which you do expect at this point, as both entries can be very important. Here. Yeah, Misfits tried the rush right in, right? Uh, really tried to power through. Uh, they lost two people right away, but they are going in. They have two kills of their own. It's 4v4. They're getting on the point. Atomicus, though, holding things in on Reaper. Should be able to get on crew here in just a moment. Crew will be going down. Not the worst trades here, though, for Misfits. Uh, they should be able to come back in with a full six before Bikini is able to reinforce. Yeah, this first point on Dorado, it's very important to play conservatively, in my opinion, just because there are essentially only two entries. You've got that underpass choke that you see Sweeney uh, lobbing Zarya bombs into, and then there's that right side staircase. So you can play pretty far back just to make sure your healers aren't getting flanked by a Genji or the very rare Fera Tracer sometimes can get past you, but if everyone's here is kind of a cohesive unit, it can be pretty easy to stay alive. And you can see Radio Boy and Bio K actually getting a couple of kills there. Pulse Bomb coming up from Zapri, not going to catch anybody. So the offense is actually a little bit stalled here. Even though they did get a couple of kills, it's it's harder for the offense to really get momentum going. Well, the thing that led up to that, they were just poked down horribly. It was really Dante and Atomicus. Uh, Atomicus in the front, Dante in the back. And you look at the health bar. Misfits was just getting completely torn apart. And right there, Dante able to take out Zapri to start things off here. And uh, Misfits and Charlie, here comes Grouts on search from the defense. Going to get four people in. Sway and Tomicus will be the fall through. It's three kills for the side of uh, Bikini. And for now, this is a uh, pretty... It's not too crazy for them right now. It's relatively reserved, and uh, they're doing a good job of keeping Misfits back. And by the way, let's just note that Bikini is not favored at all here. So right. if they full hold Misfits, yeah. that would be huge. I was just, just about to say, the fact that they've already burned two minutes off the clock without just a full wipe uh, is actually pretty impressive already. You did mention a couple of players like Maker that we've seen for months and months. So definitely a lot of seasoned players here. We've got an ultimate starting to come out now. Primal Rage actually being used by the offensive Winston Skipjack to knock that defense around. They came in off the sound bear. They just rushed right in. There was not the proper count from Bikini. Micah wasn't there. They drop a counter sound bear. It's going to be five kills for Misfits, and they will get through the first point. But for Bikini, that was not a bad opening whatsoever. They're able to get it rolling, and uh, we'll see how things go in the streets phase hold here. But Bikini, uh, we'll see if they can add a little bit more time to Misfits total. Yes, it's a, a reasonable point A defense. Uh, obviously, you don't get full holds that often, especially against number one seeded teams. So uh, giving kudos to Bikini Beach on that one, I, ha I have to just give it to the DPS. They were definitely on point. Uh, but as we're moving forward now, the gates are finally open. We're going to have Skipjack just kind of teasing that uh, upper defense there. But Reaper's already up there. You can see his silhouette kind of uh, up on the cathedral top there, just waiting around the corner. Here he comes in actually very quickly with the Zarya bubble and the Winston shield, able to get that death blossom and three kills go their way. So Misfits opening the door wide here in the second phase. Zoom. Not stopping there. Ends up getting the quad right at the very end. That's a 4K for Soon. Able to set things up. And Misfits, they might have started out slow, but they are not slow at all right now in the streets phase. They're keeping things rolling forward. And uh, for Bikini, I will note that they do have an opportunity here to bring this back. They do have Sound Barrier coming in. And they should be able to give Misfits a run for their money before second is taken. That surprise attack went so smoothly. Everything just was executed perfectly by Soon as well as Crew and... Um, Skipjack, but now it looks like Bikini Beach actually able to hold on, getting a couple of early kills there. Atomicus and Dante both in the mix, but uh, Dante actually cleaning up there with quite a lot of damage. Keeps that cart under the control of Bikini Beach. Now down to 3 minutes, 10 seconds to try and move these last few meters. Yeah, and the key there is just a sound barrier coming in. There was no real answer from Misfits. They were getting engaged on it. Short of getting a brilliant pick early on in that fight, that was not going to go their way. 
All right, Crew already at about 50% charge, off on his own, just kind of pushing the cart forward uh, indiv as an individual at this point. No one really caught up to him just yet on the side of the offense. Defense, Nicker actually getting focused down a little bit, nearly falls, but manages to stay alive. Skipjack leaps in now to try and get this offense started. Yep, Skipjack is leading the way right now. And Zapri able to get the first pick off. Dante is down, that's a 6v5 for Misfits. They're gonna take the approach, and Zapri piling on with the aid of Zoom. Four kills here for Misfits, and that will be it. They will take this point, and uh, Miss things going a little bit better for Misfits here now. They had a rough start, but they got through Streets phase very quickly. About 420 remaining here on the clock as you move forward. And Bikini, they need to take some time here to regroup and try and get a Graviton to go forward. Ouch, very early picks there by the attacking side. Put the defense on the back foot very quickly, and crew running up to the spawn already means things are looking pretty bad for Bikini Beach. They just lost four members, and the other two basically just have to wait for them to respawn. Crew has that Graviton Surge available. He can actually just pop it in the doorway at any point and grab several members of the defense, but that payload still hasn't even gotten around the corner yet. They actually pushed up a little too far too fast and now uh, are settling back down by the cart. Well, the next fight is about to be underway. Atomic is right now waiting for the speed boost to go in and drop the death loss of his team creeping up from the top. Charge is in, and so is Atomicus, wow. but he's going to be met by Cruz Graviton. Soon immediately picks him off. Misfits starting off with the early pick. Things are looking good for them right here, right now. They, You look at their health. Uh, Zebosite did almost get picked, but for now he's okay. They're just going to rush the sword. Zarya fully charged up. And uh, even though Zapri goes down, it's two extra kills here from the side Misfits, and they're going to slowly but surely turn this in their favor. Soon getting a couple of kills there on McCree. I heard the Earth Shatter come out from the side of the defense, but it looks like it didn't actually get much accomplished as the attacking team was prepared for it. Sweeney down in single digits HP, trying to duel against Crew with that Harmony of or Orb. Of course, not going to work out well for there, but the cart is approaching the end of the map right now. Three minutes still remaining. Misfits able to clean up their first point a bit. You can see the Transcendence going out now soon, running back with his Deadeye Atomicus, and crew trying to hold but back as much as they can, but it looks like this is basically a done deal as Maker is the last alive. Yeah, this is absolutely good positioning here by Misfits. They have everyone alive. They're just cleaning up the people as they roll in it. Bikini is just trying to buy time right now. The more they delay, the better of a time they, or the more gap they have to actually set a better time on their attack. But, so, Bikini's gonna fall there. It's not the worst defense. This is a beatable time, but they will need things to go pretty darn well for them moving in to the next round. Yeah, and we, we talked about how Misfits maybe had a slow point A, but it wasn't even really anything drastic. It was just a matter of them kind of trying to find picks, unable to do it until they had their ultimates available. Once they had their ultimates available, everything went swimmingly for them. You can see that sneak attack with the Reaper Death Blossom play out again soon, uh, doing just a ton of work there. Actually, basically securing that whole second checkpoint before there was even a, a dispute. Alrighty, so we are switching rounds here. It is going to be the red team on the defense, the blue team on the attack. And for that defense right now, coming out from the side of Misfits is going to be Zebosai on the Lucio, Nevix on Zenyatta, Zapri on Reaper, Crew once more on Zarya, Skipjack on the Reaper, and soon going to be on the McCree. So pretty standard stuff coming out here. Uh, from the defense, nothing crazy, no Symmetras yeah. coming out, uh, no Torbjorn, so I can't even imagine the last time we even saw Torbjorn on Dorado. But. Yeah, only on Assault Maps, I think, for the yeah. last couple of months. Uh, Numbani A, maybe the most recent payload uh, Torbjorn that I've seen. But what do you think about uh, Zebosai, actually? I want to talk about him because he was so, so good at hitscan characters back in beta, and now yeah. he's relegated, basically, to playing the Lucio for Misfits. I think that's a common path for a lot of people, though, where you make these teams where you have they feel like, okay, we have players that are really, really good hit scan, but we know you're a smart player because you used to be doing the same to us on DPS. Why don't you try being a support player instead? A lot of your good support players at one point used to be phenomenal DPS players, and they actually got their chops in Overwatch by being DPS players. It's sort of a quirk in the game where it's harder for support players to stand out, but that is how things have yeah. worked out for a lot of teams. It makes sense that you wouldn't really start on support and then yeah. evolve to a hit scan player, so I guess the other path is a bit more common but gates are about to open now. We can see Bikini Beach's final uh, lineup there for the offense, and they are going to be using Atomicus on the Genji rather than the Tracer that we saw Zapre using for Misfit. So a little bit of a different strategy here. Still probably going to play out very much the same. You've got that rooftop defense just for the first few seconds, essentially, while that cart moves around. You do not want to risk losing anyone on the defense while the cart is so close to home. Offense just spawns too close by. So they're going to be watching both of these um, choke points, the underpass and the staircase, which it's very common to push the cart all the way up to the choke point and then rush around to that 
characters. Well, Soon was getting pretty over Aggron picks there, or on poke there. Does, does get taken out immediately for the defense. And right now, Bikini is coming in. They have two picks to their name right now. They're charging nice. for it. Atomic is able to take out Nevex. This is a very quick strike right now. Coming out from the side, Bikini, they will get the final few kills they need. And Joshi, right now, they're setting a quicker time wow. than Misfits did. Yeah, Atomicus alone with the deflect kills and the you know dash resets, everything went really well for him. He was never in danger, really, of dying. I think uh, Crew was a little bit um, already distracted, I, I can say, but have fighting his own battle while Genji just went crazy on the uh, back line there. So Atomic has got to give him a lot of credit, obviously, to Bikini Beach as well, just for not dying in that exchange. Well, here's a good thing is that they had such a big advantage that they're going to have ults while Misfits will not. They will have a great answer to this Dragon Blade. Atomicus right now has the potential to put his team on his back and more. He's going to wait for the payload to come a little bit further up, but wait for fireworks here because here it comes. The Dragon Blade is on the way. He's moving to the top, swings the sword, takes out the McCree early on. That is a great pick to start things out. Looking for a little bit more Zarya in his path. But look at Misfits, they're able to hang on. They nice. get three kills in return as McKinney overdives and Atomicus does not get what he's looking for. Atomicus did some work, but everything else went yeah. Misfits' way. Uh, even though there were not really any ultimates used, maybe a couple here and there, but I think that there was nothing too significant beyond the Dragon Blade to help Bikini Beach actually push, and that obviously did not pay off. It's one of those things where Bikini, again, I think they overestimate how much they have, but they did have an ult advantage there, and that's the difference between a good team and a great team. Misfits, despite being outgunned in terms of raw power, they were still able to turn their favor, and now Zafri does have Death Blossom on the way, and the Graviton is in! Zafri should be falling here in just a moment, looking to go in, is waiting for the Transcendence to fade, but here he goes, on the way, Ooh. and he might not even need to use the Death Blossom here, as Misfits is getting the kills they need. Yeah, the sound barrier coming out on the side of Misfits also going to keep them in high health. Even after, after the engagement started, they popped the sound barrier, so they basically had the dominoes falling uh, from the get-go and Zapri able to clean up pretty easily there on Maker and Sweeney. They're just going to teleport slash jump right back up to that high ground. The cart is not even past the church door yet, so they're essentially playing it just as if the doors had just now opened. Yeah, and uh, Bikini now, their big advantage they did have is gone. Zapri still holding on to Death Blossom again. He could go off at any moment right now, just waiting for his opportunity. Atomic is being a little bit poked, but here comes Zapri. Going to take the deep dive, gets the double kill off, and sets up soon for a kill in the Zen. That's going to be three kills here for Misfits, and this push is dead. That was a great drop down. Um, if you notice, Misfits actually engaged first, so you gave Zapri enough room, enough freedom to actually pick his moment. He hit Death Blossom really high in the air, which I think is a little bit weird, but he did land the, the kill immediately immediately, so it can't be too critical there. Yeah, and we talk about how things are going here between both teams. Uh, this is a decent opportunity for Misfits still, or sorry, for Bikini in the next fight. They will have Dragon Blade into Graviton. That's one of the more powerful wombo combos in the game. They're not really running into anything too big here. They will have to look out for the Transcendence. Transcendence can ruin the day of a Graviton, but if they take out the Zen earlier, just go for targets that aren't clumped up. We'll see, but here we go. They're in the way right now. Both teams getting into it. The Graviton is out, but so is the Transcendence, and for now, Misfits is holding on, but Dante comes in! The triple kill Deadeye going to be what Bikini needs. Atomicus with the cleanup in the bottom, picks up the double Dragon Blade, and that is going to open the way for Bikini. Here's the problem though, Joshi. We're starting to run out of time. We are starting to run out of time. Two minutes and 22 seconds, not to finish this checkpoint, but to finish the entire map. So now they're essentially ultless. Obviously, you can see Winston has his available, but pretty much everything else got popped. Micker's going to take at least one more engagement before he's got the sound barrier available, unless he can stay alive a while. But now that the defense is starting to file back in, not a ton of ults on either side. Soon's going to pop that Deadeye right away and not find anything for it. Yeah, uh, he does, the thing is, though, it does zone people back. Skipjack takes out Dante early on. 65 for Misfits. And for them, their magic number is maybe one, if not two here. So this fight alone could win them the game if they play it well. Nice. Soon, looking for the pickoffs in the back, is not under that much pressure. Only 50 HP. Fighting Zen does get taken out, but the rest of his team is doing so. Zapri oh. with the double kill Death Blossom just to finish it out. And now at the minute 40 left, Bikini Beach is under the gun. This game has been so full of just the big moments, every ultimate being so influential, and this time it does go the way of Misfits with Zapri's Death Blossom again being the deciding factor. It feels like more often these Death Blossoms are deciding fights than Sound Barrier or Transcendence even, as those fights usually in involve tons of ults. It's just a single Death Blossom, uncontested, getting the mass kills there. And Zapri at it again, getting a very quick kill on Winston is going to stunt Bikini Beach's uh, progress. Yeah, and Zapri's not done yet. Has Zarya in his sight. Zarya with Discord Orb on her. Will get healed up by the Transcendence here. And this is really all or nothing for Bikini. They must win this fight or the game will be over. Atomicus comes with Dragon Blade, but his team is dying all around him. Soon picked off two in the very beginning. The Dragon Blade will get no more kills, and he's going to get shot down by Sue. 
Look at that, Dante still going uh, on the side of the offense, trying to stay alive as long as he can, but without most of his team present, I can't imagine he's gonna last long. There goes the Winston he was duoing with, and now Dante falls as well. 45 seconds to finish the map. This is all but over, folks. That last point uh, takes at least 40 seconds, so we can go ahead and uh, award Misfits the win here. Of course, they are gonna play it out to uh, the uh, time remaining. The interesting thing here, though, is that this was not a bad showing by Bikini. Uh, up until, of course, uh, just last weekend, a lot of people did consider Misfits the best team in EU. So even though they're going to lose this map, this was a good showing, and it felt like if things had gone a few different ways, certainly Bikini would have to play up a little bit more, and Misfits would have to play a little bit down. This wasn't a uh, mission impossible, but here comes Skipjack. He'd be bouncing right around, was looking for the knockoff. I course. really like the coordinated offense from Misfits. It felt like uh, Bikini Beach had the better point A, obviously, set a much faster time, but the coordination from then on after the doors opened for Misfits, everything went their way. We can see a lot of Graviton surges and things like that happening. We know now that time has run out, so that is officially gonna be the Misfits' first map. Yeah, and I would say the biggest breakpoint there and the biggest lost opportunity, we brought it up mid-cast, but is when they did have that blazing fast attack and they had the Dragon Blade, there were no defensive ultimates that could really deal with it. And he took out the McCree early on, but then dove the back line while his own back line was getting dove in turn. And in the end, Misfits was able to clutch out that fight, a fight where again, they were lacking in resources. But that was the biggest play of the game for Misfits because it stopped what could have been an unwinnable snowball. I agree. The fact that they stopped them there in front of the church is due largely to the rest of the team ignoring the Genji. The Genji yeah. got the first quick kill and then started to chase down Crew, who's one of the best Zarya players in the world. Definitely not the first person I would want to hunt down as a Genji, but he did get the kill there. It just wasn't enough as the rest of Misfits' defense just rolled in and picked apart the cart. So uh, you're totally right. I think that was a, a very influential point in the game. I think every every ultimate was so important there that having the Dragon Blade not get the mileage that it needed definitely stumped Bikini Beach. And just you know, add on, that is really the difference between your very best teams and your teams that are just trying to contend is that your best teams don't let good opportunities go away and they find a way of winning fights when they really shouldn't be winning fights. A situation like that, I mean, people know how good Dragon Blade is. It's actually getting nerfed in the next patch if PTR <laughs> is any indication. That's a case where, you know, you switch the teams up a little bit. Maybe it's Rogue there. Rogue probably plays a little bit better around that and they have a better chance of winning the fight. Bikini, they again, they show us some great things there, but that's just one of the notes in Overwatch where your really good teams, they don't squander opportunities nearly as much as contending teams might do. Yeah, that's that. And it all comes down to communication and experience. I mean, the, the Bikini Beach guys obviously are very accurate. We saw Dante get yeah. quite a few headshots and um, everything, you know, looked okay from the DPS perspective. It's really just that cohesion of who's your target? Are we, do we have the same target? Are you, are your are healers safe all the time? Things like that really come into play and you can see that the experience from Misfits obviously going a long way here. Yeah, and consistency is a thing too, uh, sort of bringing it up there. We saw big plays from both Dante and Atomicus, but it wasn't consistent throughout the entire game. And it's not just a new team like Bikini Beach that might have those issues. Uh, later tonight, we look at teams like Melty and Anox as mm -hmm. they're going to be playing. Those teams are marred by inconsistency where, <laughs> you know, the way I like to talk about it is that Anox uh, in week one of the Overwatch Open, they had sort of their Cinderella week where they were way outperforming and showed that under the right circumstances, they can have a great showing. And yet you look at them in recent times, they've had losses that maybe they shouldn't have had, just weird, basic mistakes. So consistency in Overwatch, it really is the big factor between uh, teams that are at the top and teams that are trying to make that next leap. Yeah, and interestingly, Anox is in this group. Yes. So if Misfits do actually go to map two, which is Hollywood, uh, and take that as well. They could be sitting in the winner's bracket final looking looking at Anox again, <laughs> and it could be a, a nice rematch for us. So I'm excited definitely to see if that does play out in that way. But yeah, Hollywood is going to be map number two. That was the choice of Bikini Beach, so not too deterred by their Dorado performance, still feeling like that's a better choice than Nepal here for game two. Yeah, and that's not too surprising. Again, we sort of mentioned the idea be in a break is that sometimes newer teams don't like going on uh, some of the tried and true payload maps, but there's also a reverse logic there where if you're a newer team and you only have so much scrim time, you really focus the three maps that are played the most. And then even though you know a team like Misfits has put in more hours than you, you still want to fight them there because you feel like you have a, your best shot at it as well, just based on your own practice time. Totally. Play to your strengths. That's always a valid strategy. You don't always have to try and shake the other guy off. Just um, outplay them. Do, do your best, as, as you said. So Hollywood getting a nice look here as we kind of fly through. But this should be a map that any competitive Overwatch fan should know like the back of their hand at this point. I think uh, very often this fight will come down to the streets phase, actually, where that 
the defensive teams normally take the high ground and choose to drop down. You can see full holds there very often uh, just on the other side of the saloon. And after that, it's basically that very last choke point. Uh, we've seen teams defend for two, three, four minutes sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, there has been a trend as of late where we have seen occasional full holds here on uh, point A, but usually the offense has a very good chance of taking point A on the first attack. And take a look at that offense from Misfits. They are rolling right out. Skipjack on the Winston, Devix and Yana. Soon McCree, Zebosan Lucio. Crew on the Zarya and Zapri on the offense of Genji. But uh, Zapri running right into those Hellfire shotguns to start things out. And the defense Ooh. maybe going over Why? aggro. That was not a smart move because I'll tell you what, a t or, the offense is going to reinforce much quicker than the defense will here. Yeah, Atomicus, I got to I gotta give a thumbs down on that one. This is just way too fast, too aggressive. You got the first pick. Could have bought you so much time, but then just getting a little too aggressive with it. Misfits easily rolling in now. That Orb of Discord getting a lot of mileage. I've seen it uh, just bouncing around constantly as these targets switch. And here you can see the um, Zarya player Sweeney actually getting taken out. And now it's all but done at point A. Yeah, we talk about fundamental mistakes a lot in the game. It's one of those things where you don't want to get overly greedy. You got a big pick off on the Zapri in the very beginning. That's a great position to be in. Back out, or if you're going to go in, make sure your entire team is with you. They overdove that, and then what could have been at least one of the two uh, full fights won on point A was a fully lost fight where, honestly, they should have won. Yeah, so just notes for next time, Bikini Beach. Try to try to take your wins where you yes. can get them, because that definitely could have played out a, a lot differently. But now we see the defense actually on the high ground. Zapri finding the kill on the enemy Winston very quickly is actually a great uh, open door for them now in the second phase. And Zapri right now, uh, you look at the Elts. Misfits did so much better in the early fight. They're going to be charged up more earlier here. Soon taking out Dante immediately. And here comes Zapri looking to feast on the top. Zenyatta in his sights. Zen does get the shield, will survive for now. But you look at this. Dragon Blade in the Graviton is up. Bikini does not have an answer for it. They will get Transcendence here in just a moment, so maybe that window of it being a full team wipe is over to some extent. But regardless, Misfits has made a whole lot of progress and they are ready to explode. Yeah, Sound Barrier is going to actually be available for Maker. If he hadn't died at 99%, wow, I can't believe that backfired so quickly. That's the Caster Curse in full effect. Crew has Graviton Surge available as well, so Misfits should not really have much opposition rolling in as uh, Radio Boy, even if he does pop Transcendence, he's, he's basically alone at this point, so it's not going to work out for them. Seven full minutes just to push the last point here. Misfits are definitely making up for lost time on Toronto here on Hollywood. I'm sure at some point back of his Zephyr is wondering, gee, I'll use this Dragon Blade at some point, but he's getting yeah. up hills without using it. It doesn't matter. Every ult is up right now for Misfits. <laughs> they are setting an incredibly fast time. So fast that they need to send at least one more person back to that cart to get full three. Yeah. Make sure you're actually pushing the cart. That can be a bit of an oversight when you're rolling through the defense like that. But uh, everything on looking good for Misfits, as he said, six ultimates available against four, soon to be five, with Atomicus. So we, we will likely see some fireworks here on this next push. Yeah, that is absolutely going to be on the menu here. They will have a defensive sound bear, but they already lost their Zen. Here, they're going to roll in here in just a moment. Zebosai takes up block. Here comes his defensive sound barrier, but they're down people as they do this. This is risky. Crew, here comes the oh. counter. Three person in the Graviton. Will the fall be there? And they are going to get the fall that they need. Crew picks up the double. Nice and easy, and for Misfits, they are rolling to what could be an unbeatable time. Yeah, Bikini Beach losing that healer early, and then Micker actually popped Sound Barrier before any opposing ultimates came out. It meant that the Graviton Surge follow-up uh, from Crew there was just completely deadly. Atomicus does have the Death Blossom now. He does pop it and get soon, but the deflect from Zapri is going to keep him alive. Crew does eventually fall to outside damage. This is a little bit of a pickup here as uh, the defense is starting to regain control a little bit. Down goes Zebosai as well, so Bikini Beach finally putting a stop to this cart right at the very end. This is incredibly vital for Bikini Beach. If they had lost that last fight, that was effectively going to be game. Yeah. It would just be a time that would give them maybe one the two team wipes max that they could endure before it was GG. So this is vital. They're going to have to hold for a much longer period of time. Yeah, thank goodness they got some kills and uh, made this a, a fight once again. We do have lots of ultimates still available on both sides. Uh, Bikini looking to make use of that Earth Shatter potentially into the Deadeye follow-up. But no, Deadeye is actually going to be popped first when all the targets are in weird spots, but he still finds crew through the pinhole. Yeah, he was able to take out crew there. It was a good Deadeye, which again, just delays Misfits more. Misfits probably not too eager to rush in here, 6v5. So for Bikini, this is a good restabilization. They're going to have to do this for at least another two and a half minutes to really feel secure and think that they'll have a chance when they switch to uh, the next round where they'll be on the attack. Yeah, and this could have been the hold we saw on A if Reaper hadn't run right in. But here, here we, we go, go. Earth the Earth Shatter. Shatter is down. Knocks down three. Block finding what he's looking for. Doesn't have a whole lot follow-up to begin with, but he is his own follow-up. Takes out Nevix. The rest of the team not quite with them, and Misfits actually do okay at handling that. That could have been way worse for them. And now I think they're debating, okay, we got one pick on the Reinhardt. Do we fight this while down a player or not? It seems like 
they're going to back off and still wait for everyone to respawn. Yeah, there was a pretty low health squad there, even though Misfits didn't lose, you know, everything. They still uh, did not have the pushing power. And we have the Deadeye coming out from soon now, just pushing them into a corner here. Does Oh, he could have killed Lucio, but he didn't. Soundbarrier actually comes out on both sides. Zapri with the Dragon Blade out now, finally getting some use of it. Yeah, Zapri's moving in. Does slice Reinhardt right down, makes it a double kill. Down goes Radico, and right now Misfits potentially on the verge of finishing out this round. Everything going their way, and they will get that time. And that's still a pretty darn quick time. Yeah. Bikini Beach, their backs are going to be against the wall going in to the next round. Yeah, Bikini Beach won about one and a half fights there on defense. It was a pretty rough go during most of this map. But you can see Zapray actually being a huge uh, contributor here for Misfits. There's Cruz, triple Graviton Surge cleanup from that big fight right before they finally got held. Um, Atomicus, once again, the Death Blossom coming into play. Good job by Zapri to actually uh, hit that deflect on time. The Earth Shatter, everything went well for the defense. This was the last stand of the defense, though, is that Earth Shatter. And now we will be flipping sides. Bikini Beach do have a very um, kind of rough time to beat. It's still sub six minutes that they've got to get through here. The one observation I have of this match so far is that Misfits, they're not making a whole lot of mistakes, and they're very good at punishing Bikini when they step out of line and make mistakes. Bikini has actually had very good engages and fights here, and points where they've been able to pick off one person early on. But then I feel like they just don't have the experience to know, okay, let's hold it back, let's not chase after. And they've sort of beaten themselves at some points. Like, even that last point there where Reinhardt went that far out, it was a nice earth shatter, but I'm not entirely convinced they need to be that far up to begin with. So it's one of those teething things. But I do think they've shown, like, some good promise here. And I don't know if they'll get one of the top two spots here uh, today and tomorrow, but at the very least, it, it is promising. Yeah, actually putting up um, more of a fight against Misfits than I would have thought. So already, you know, giving props to them for uh, their Dorado match. This is going to be a really rough time to beat. Maybe they can surprise us if they do actually. Maybe maybe this time, if uh, Atomicus does find a kill on Zapri really early, they can actually use that to push a cart rather than um, blow the defense. <laughs> Yeah, and we'll see how this works out. Uh, really here the, for Misfits, Misfits is gunning for about three to four team wipes here, especially if they can get it earlier on. Uh, Bikini Beach, their best win condition here. They do need to take point A, if not first attack on second, and just keep going with momentum and not let Misfits really fully establish, because if they get to a point where they're just trading off team wipes, it's not going to work out for them. They just don't have that much time. Offense rolling out now. You can see Atomicus is going to be on that Genji again. Uh, no, no tracer for this squad, but he did perform quite well on Genji in that Dorado map, so can't be surprised there. Winston's actually going to start to engage in Cafe. Yeah, Winston is in. Atomicus, is in. Atomicus goes right down, though. Both teams trying off kills, but Misfits coming out ahead at 3-1 to one advantage, and those are the trades you need if you want to hold on to point A. You can't trade one for one. You have to do the trades as Misfits was doing there. Sue with the final cleanup, and that is going to be a first point hold here for Misfits. Yeah, it was enough to actually kill the DPS and tanks first. The supports alone with that uh, I think it was Dante was the last to die there, but the supports with Dante they were not enough to clean up the last three of Misfits. They have plenty of time to return to battle, and you can see Ultimate's charge is really starting to pile up now. No one really has anything available for this next fight, though. Yep, and again, this is really all down to the wire here for Bikini. They really need to win this fight, or things are going to end very badly indeed. They just don't have that much time. They don't have much of a buffer. They are going to be leaping in. Winston goes right in on top of the cafe, sets up Dante to take out Nevix. It's a 65 for Bikini right now, so they're doing pretty well. Drew, though, fully charged up, is firing right back, gets the double kill. Zarya right now being unleashed, and he might not be done yet. Still fully charged, laying in the Zarya right clicks. And Bikini, they're doing a decent job of keeping this even. They might even be able to take the point off this, but Misfits is making this take so long for them, it's going to be rough as Soon picks up two more kills. Kind of interesting the positioning that we just witnessed there. You said uh, Soon got that kill on Zenyatta. They were all in the yep. cafe, all very bunched up, no health pack available, no healer there. And Bikini Beach, had they known that, may have just charged into the cafe and tried to get it done. But Atomicus now, with the Dragon Blade out, is actually going to get flashbanged and knocked down while the sword's still out. He tries to get the slashes on Reaper, but he's just going to Wraith walk away. Yep, lots of CC going down. Atomicus here. Sound is out. This is all in for Bikini. If they lose this fight, that is going to be it. Nevix taking down Radio early on. Two extra kills here for Misfits. Zebo side to gang in as the Lucio, and this will be a hold for Misfits. And with three minutes left, it's not mathematically over yet but it's awfully close. Yeah, you can always assume fast as possible something like 45 seconds per stretch if you're uh, newer to the game and you, you don't know that. But the fact is they haven't even taken A yet. It's been no. over two minutes. They, they're struggling against the in-game clock, not to mention the entire map that they have to beat here. Right, so truly if they were to set the world's fastest Hollywood time, completely <laughs> breaking, they would have to win this fight 
bar right none. Yeah. It's everything has to go on. The Graviton Surge though comes in from crew on the defense, gets in three. Zapri doesn't like what he sees. Wraith swarms out, does have Death Blossom at the ready. He'll be dropping it. Here he goes, takes out one, does a lot of damage to another. It's gonna be two kills here for Misfits, make it three. And if it wasn't GG before, it's certainly GG now. Yep, and again, we will play till the end of time, especially the map timer. One minute and 10 seconds is really not that much longer, but uh, Bikini Beach definitely going to keep giving it their all. And they will have to play again, Bikini Beach. Maybe not today, or actually definitely not today if they do lose here. Uh, they would be playing in tomorrow's matches, but definitely need to be prepared for, you know, Anox potentially Misfits again, potentially Melty. Uh, so still three powerhouse teams for them to be working against. And they can learn from this. They can definitely learn from this experience against Misfits, the number one seed essentially in Europe for this uh, Face It and E League uh, it's, Overwatch Open. It's good experience, there's no doubt about that. And really, if they have their highs, they really could pose a threat to an Anox or a Melty. But right now, we're going to look at the last fight. Atomicus moving in, Dragon Blade on the way. Remember that even if they did win this fight, it would be over. But Atomicus is going to go down to Zapri. And Misfits is still hanging strong, even as time slips away from Bikini. So uh, Crew, talk about good Zarya play. He has been on point this entire series. Yeah, Crew actually, when I said earlier he was one of the best Zaryas in the world, he actually posted you know, the Master Overwatch link uh, where he was number one in the world. So he definitely invested in that golden Zarya gun for a reason. Every Graviton Surge is on point. Every uh, ally bubble that he's provided has been excellent. And he's just played so much Zarya now. He is the de facto expert. If I had a, any questions about Zarya, I would go to him first. Yeah, and uh, it's a hero that he's played for a really long time. I remember going all the way back in the day, back before people really mixing in Zarya a lot. Crew was one of the names uh, that came up on Zarya, and he's improved loads from that uh, time way back in the day. But here we go. Play the game coming up by Zapri. Why Whoa. not? That was awkward. <laughs> in a Reinhardt sandwich. That is awkward. <laughs> yeah, Genji starts out in a bit of a weird position, but the Dragon Blade comes out, and things go as you would expect for a play of the game with Genji. Everything dies, and Zapri and Misfits come out on top. So that is, the series is done now. That's a 2-0 yeah. for Misfits. They will be going to the upper bracket final, so we will be seeing them a little bit later in this broadcast, but Bikini Beach, they are going to fall, obviously, 0-2, and we will be seeing them again tomorrow. Yep, and uh, one person we are seeing now, we are rejoined here at the desk by Rachel. How are you doing here? Hey, guys, I'm great. I was actually just marveling over that that last play of the game there with Zapri. He had no health when he initiated <laughs> that, and he killed so many people. So I was uh, in awe a moment there. But in awe overall, this this whole performance, um, a little bit expected to, to have the Misfits come out on top. But uh, overall, was there anything that stand out in the, in the last two maps that, that would we uh, want to focus on first? I would say the biggest thing for me is it's two things. One is that Misfits is awfully consistent. They know what yeah. they're doing. They punish mistakes horribly. The silver lining for Bikini Beach, though, is that they did have points where they did get the better of one of the best teams in the EU. So for them, I feel like they can look back and go, all right, so if we don't make the mistakes we did, if we sort of calm down a little bit after getting picks, take a step back, not go as aggressive, I do think they can improve their game and have a better chance of coming back tomorrow uh, for day number two of Group A. Yep, I think um, their performance on Dorado was a bit better than I expected coming into the match. Uh, on Hollywood, things kind of fell back to that yeah. one seed versus bottom seed. But, you know, there are, here are some highlights, obviously, from throughout the match. But I got to give props to Dante and Atomicus. They both pulled their weight as DPS, and that is something that a lot of um, weaker teams struggle with, is if your DPS can't get the job done, you're not going to have a chance at all. Yeah, we actually did see some uh, great play from Atomicus on uh, Hollywood on the second map when uh, right towards the end there, he was going for that final push, going for that last point, and uh, he did manage in combination with Zenyatta to get some final kills, but not enough for his team to follow up. So uh, really, really good job by him, but uh, of course Misfits is the, uh, the best job we have to talk about here. I thought on Dorado, uh, their hold right outside the church was uh, kind of the, the turning point in, in the attitudes of the two teams. That's really seemed to be when Misfits mm -hmm you know, demonstrated their dominance, and, and uh, we had our, our Bikini Beach guys sort of start to respect that a little more, maybe too much. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, the biggest thing about that, that was a fight where they had an alt advantage, and they really could have at least brought it almost to the end of the second point, but really, you look at Misfits, they ignored the Genji, even despite the early pickoff, dove the back line, and they were able to stop the push in its tracks. Oh, here's that Deadeye that we didn't quite see on stream. I was wondering how he was able to pull off a triple Deadeye in that chaos, but it was actually just him hiding slightly down the stairs and then moving slowly up, getting those skulls. So that was actually a great play there uh, that we did not get to see earlier. So glad glad to have these uh, highlights rolling here. And every, every Dragon Blade and Death Blossom was like hugely influential throughout these games. The defensive ults were actually less impressive this time around just because they were used at times you would expect them during the Graviton Surges, more or less, almost every time. Yeah, and uh, we did see a little bit of play from Skipjack there too. Hugely instrumental at just displacing the enemy team. So uh, 
We saw some some great stuff for him just disrupting that that back line of Bikini Beach and, and really making room for some plays for his team. Skipjack is one of those tank players where he's sort of an unsung hero at points, but you talk to a lot of people in the comp scene about Reinhardt's they respect, especially on the EU side of things. Skipjack is always top three in the conversation. And in fact, uh, talking with Reinforce, I think way back in the day, he's like, yeah, Skipjack, he's just, he doesn't make mistakes. He's really, really good. And uh, sometimes I feel like for Lower Watch, the DPS players do get a lot of love, perhaps sometimes too much. Mm -hmm. But the tank and support play is a big deal. And uh, Skipjack, a big reason for Misfits having continued success. Yeah, and uh, I, we did see some people actually be a little critical of tanks recently about, uh, you know, <laughs> taking a lot of damage, dying often. Uh, that's what a tank is doing a good job because, you know, the tanks yeah. can't output as much damage. They're not a huge threat. So when they're really getting in the enemy's team face, when they're becoming enough of a disruption that they need to be killed, that's when a tank is at his best. And that's sort of what we saw Skipjack doing here. Yeah, there's a good concept here in uh, Overwatch where there's productive deaths and not productive yes. deaths. If you charge in as a tank, kill one person, then immediately die. But in the cause of creative distraction where people can get to the back line and win you the fight, that was okay. And it goes that way for uh, team fights in general, too. If you're a team and you rush into another team and you die, but you cause them to burn four ults in the progress and you have an ult advantage in the next fight, that's much better than, say, going in and not forcing out any ults at all. So even failure sometimes can have different ways of being evaluated at the end of it. All right, and we have uh, the incredible play of the game. So let's take a look at that and see if it's truly incredible. I hope it's the uh, the Death Blossom sneak attack that we saw. We'll see. Right. As uh, we get loaded up here, this is presented by As Asus Rogue, Republic of Gamers. It is going to be Zapray's Dragon Blade near the end of Hollywood here. In between two Reinhardts, pulls out the Dragon Blade and says, I'm not going to stand for it. Gets the kills he needs to, and Misfits able to finish out the map right after that, completing what was a pretty darn quick time on Hollywood. Yep, that was kind of the, the last play that they needed there. We saw, again, and that, that was the regular play of the game, too, as well <laughs> as the incredible play of the game. That doesn't always happen, but uh, I'm sure he is happy to get those accolades. Yeah, and uh, something else to note about Zapray, he changed heroes more than anyone else that game. We saw him on Tracer, we saw him on Reaper, we saw him on Genji on defense. So a really flexible player. And uh, actually, uh, ZP, can you offer me some insight into sort of when Genji is the best choice, when Reaper is the best choice? Because we saw uh, Zapray on Reaper on defense, but uh, let's see, um, Soon was playing Reaper on on attack, so they, they kind of switch off there. It really depends on the team. Uh, generally speaking, you will see Reaper a little bit more often on defense versus Genji on offense, but some teams, they just really trust in the Genji or the Reaper, vice versa. I mean, to give you a good example of a team that really clutches on Genji a whole lot, mm -hmm. the new phase with Shadowburn. Shadowburn, his go-to answer for most things uh -huh. is go Genji. Other players uh, will vary it up a little bit more, like say you look at Envious, for example, you'll see mm -hmm. Tailspin on Reaper a lot more often than Genji under normal circumstances. So players definitely have their favorites, but uh, both heroes can be very devastating on either offense or defense, depending upon what you're up against. Yeah, and I think Reaper is going to come out more often against heavier tanks or better yes. better tank players from time to time, and Genji is all about that verticality because he can climb walls, and that is essentially the main reason you would pick him over other offensive characters is just the fact that he can get around a lot easier. Even Trace or has to find stairs or elevators mm -hmm. and so on <laughs> just to be able to get around like Genji does normally. All right. Well, great insight, guys. Thank you so much. You guys watching at home, I know you want to jump in this conversation here. Share your thoughts with us. You can do that with the hashtag OWOpen. Of course, make sure you're following at FaceIt and at E-League. Get your, uh, your tweets retweeted. Do in our conversation. We'd love to hear from you. And, uh, guys, we have Anox versus Melty Esports Club coming up next. Don't go anywhere.